In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ in our midst. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we read the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 9, verses 17 to 31. And this is the story which happened after uh, Transfiguration, Transfiguration in Russian, uh, Preobrazhenie. Although we celebrate Transfiguration in August, but actually it's happened now, right before Pascha. Church later decided to move this holiday to end of uh, summer. So Jesus and three of his disciples, Saint Peter, Saint John and James, they were on the top of the mount and Jesus was praying. And during the prayer, it was two great men of Old Testament, Moses and Elijah, appeared to him. And they saw transfiguration of our Lord. He revealed to them as much as they could hold it, his divinity. If you will pay attention when we are having transfiguration service, it always we include as, cool, as much as they could hold it. Yes, because humans cannot see God normally. So this is why we have such kind of restriction, as much as they could. And they was coming down. To better understand this gospel, I would like to just read a three more sentences just before the story begins. We will better understand probably this gospel. So when we open the gospel of St. Mark, start not verse 17 in chapter 9, but verse 14, we will read it such words. When they, they it means Jesus, uh, Peter, James, and John, came down to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them. So it was a large crowd of people around the rest of nine apostles, disciples, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. So it was not just a nice crowd of people, very peaceful, no. It was teacher of the law, Jewish teachers, arguing with the rest of nine apostles. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with the wonder and ran to greet him. And Jesus asking, what are you arguing with them about? He asked. So the man from crowd answered this question to him. Disciples feel maybe ashamed. They feel uncomfortable to answer these questions. Definitely the law teachers didn't also participate in such conversation. So the father of the child came forward to Jesus Christ. He uh, kneeled in front of him and said, Teacher, I brought to you my son. Just pay attention. He brought his son who was possessed by demon to Jesus Christ. He found somehow that Jesus on his way to Jerusalem are going to stay in this area. So he came with his son to meet Jesus Christ. But when he came, he found that Jesus absent. But people said to him, there is nine of his disciples and they are able to help. Because people saw many miracles the rest of apostles was able to do. So definitely they say, try. They can help. And they couldn't. Those teachers of the law, scribes, Pharisees, try to find any reason to accuse Jesus that he 
is not really indeed a messiah, that he is not having some power from God. So this is why they start telling disciples, you're just making something, you're not able to do it. And disciples tried to help, protect themselves, but they couldn't. So this crowd came to Jesus Christ. What Jesus answered to them? He said very simply, you unbelieving generation. Yes. All the Jewish people who were there, it was unbelieving generation. You have to understand, for thousand years, from generation to generation, they pass information, the Messiah will come. The savers will come to the world. But unfortunately, in the time of Jesus Christ, the people completely change their perspective who is Messiah. So they didn't want to recognize Jesus as their Messiah. So this is why he calls them unbelieving generation. And just rhetorically, Jesus replied to them and asked, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? And then he gave command, bring him to me. Child, definitely. So they brought him, a child. This child was very ill. It wasn't, it was actually a very long time from his childhood later we will found in gospel. And this evil spirit tried to kill this child. So many times he often threw him into the fire or water to kill him. This is testimony of his father. Can you imagine how parents have to have to deal to see their child possessed by evil who try to kill their child? Definitely, they did everything possible to help their son. Probably, they visit all famous doctors, but no one able to help. So they learned about Jesus from Nazareth, from Galilee. It was less hope they had, and when they come, and his disciples cannot help. Definitely his father was completely have no hope. So he said, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. This is cry of the father. Cry to Jesus Christ. He is crying to him and saying, if you can do anything, have pity. We are not worthy. But have just pity on us and help us. He is not divided pain of his son with his own. He said, us. And Jesus replied to him, if you can, anything possible for those who believe. And this is true. Anything is possible to those who believe. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help to overcome my unbelief. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes during the challenge, during some great need, our faith shaken. Sometimes we are almost losing our faith because we see no hope. But please remember what Jesus said. Everything is possible for those who believe. Then Jesus healed this boy and gave it to him to 
his father. Privately, the rest of nine apostles came to Jesus and they was asking, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied to them, this kind can come out only by prayer and fast. This is time of Great Lent. Already this is four Sundays of Great Lent. And Great Lent, it's not only time to make our life more challengeable or miserable, but this is time when we have to improve our prayer skills, our fasting rules. Four weeks already fast, more than a half. We have to be completely honest with ourselves and answer to ourselves how I am doing this great land. Have I did all possible efforts to go properly through this land? Many times we complain that God not hear our prayer. But this is the answer. Prayer and fasting. This is what helping our prayer. So my dear brothers and sisters, it's a good for us to find this answer, not for someone else, for ourselves. Have I did everything possible to improve my prayer skills, my fasting rules? Have I did? Please remember that we are not live by ourselves in this world. Yes, many other people, especially people who are not orthodox around us, and they observing us and our life. And seeing us, they can say what kind of their face. We can say many nice words about orthodoxy, but if we will not have orthodox life, our words useless. Can you see what happened when Jesus left? Other people start attacking the rest of disciples try to make it everything possible to make a statement that Jesus not indeed have this great privilege from God to help people. Same happened nowadays. Many people attacking that we do some silly stuff, especially during great land, to prove it, that our faith is not true. My dear brothers and sisters, I sincerely wish to each of us to be strong in our faith. I sincerely wish to each of us to do as much as we could to fulfill all our Christian duties. I sincerely wish to each of us to be a good example to the rest of the world. Amen. Christ in our midst. Is there a